Hey, good afternoon to you. 506 here at News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we are making sense of the news. You can join us today, and I'll take your calls coming up at 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. DEI, the left says it stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. What it means is prejudice, and it's infecting everything, including, unfortunately, the medical industry. Our, my next guests say it's a huge problem and lawmakers need to recognize it before it truly wrecks the entire medical industry. Dr. Stanley Goldfarb with Do No Harm is here and Congressman Greg Murphy, who's also a medical doctor, joins us as well. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. with you. Thank you very much. So, Congressman, I know your time is short, so I want to start with you right away. Uh, give us a sense of what's going on with the medical industry and why you're concerned. Well, you know, Vince, uh, Dr. Goldfarb and, our, and I have dedicated our entire lives to taking care of individuals, um, oftentimes of individuals that don't look like us. We're taught to take care of a patient regardless of what they look like, their ability to pay, their religion, their creed, or anything. But what's happening now is that the DEI theology of division is now infusing into medical schools um, in the admissions process, in the curriculum, and even in the hiring and firing and promoting of professors. It's an absolutely divisive and discriminatory theology, and we can't have that in medicine. This isn't, uh, you know, this isn't art school, I say. This isn't English school. This is medical school where lives are at stake. Congressman, I've seen some uh, studies and, and claims that, that in certain medical schools, what they're doing is uh, they're lowering the MCAT requirements. That would be the entrance test for, for medical school. Uh, for people of certain races, and then raising it for for people of others, uh, what is this actually happening on a on a broad scale basis? Yeah, well, we have a good graph. We actually showed it out at the uh, uh, press conference today that shows it is lower for the entrance in medical school for some different uh, uh, identities or politics, as you were, and then higher for other ones. You know, the bottom line is that people, who do they want as their doctor? They want the smartest, the most capable, the yes. most skillful surgeon. God forbid they're taking care of your child, your grandmother, your spouse. That's what people want. They don't want identity, identity politics in medicine. I'll get more into the to the data here with Dr. Stanley Goldfarb in just a moment. But, uh, Congressman, legislatively, what's the plan here? How do we address this? <clears throat> well, the Educate Act um, – seeks to withdraw uh, federal funding from any of these schools that are forcing this. They're forced professing DEI statements, the same thing as I said in the curriculum, as well as the accrediting institutions, which I think are one of the real problems also, going along with the AAMC, the uh, American Association of Medical Colleges and Universities. This is coming from up above, um, pushing it down to medical schools. And this nonsense, this discriminatory behavior has to stop and it has to stop now. Yeah, federal go federal money should not go to anything that advances racial, ethnic, or religious prejudice. I don't know why this is, even needs sure, to be a law, but here we are. We didn't want it 50 years ago. We don't want it now. So Yeah. All right, Congressman, uh, thank you very much. Congressman uh, Murphy, good to talk to you today, sir. Uh, Dr. Stanley Goldfarb, thank you uh, as well for, for being here today. Uh, tell us about your role in all of this and, and what made you so interested in, in the first place. Oh, well, uh, thank you, Vince. It's great to be with you. You know, I've had a long career in academic medicine. I was the head of the curriculum at the University of Pennsylvania for 13 years. It just became clear to me that medical education was starting to go off the off the rails. This sort of thing that the congressman has been such a leader in uh, was the thing that bothered me the most, is that the best and the brightest weren't the ones who were being selected for medical school admission, but rather people were being uh, admitted based on racial issues. I'm sorry if there's some extraneous noise, but I'm on the train, so I apologize. That's okay. Well, that. we talk to busy no, no. people all the time. We're very accustomed right to this. Now. So, so Dr. Goldfarb, what are the risks if you are lowering the standards for who becomes a doctor? Well, you know, the example I've given, and I had a chance to say this several times today, is um, let's say you're in surgery and you're this this person is standing over you and he opens you up to correct a problem and he finds something that's unexpected. And now he has to use all of his knowledge, his experience, his skill, his wisdom in order to respond to what he found, to make the appropriate changes, to deal with any complications that may occur. This requires lots of intellectual power. And frankly, it, that's reflected in academic achievement. So when you start taking in people 
with lower academic performance than others, you're risking the quality of that particular surgical outcome, for an example. So the risk here is better health outcomes, and risk is quality of care for the American people. Are there, give us a sense of some of the stories that have worried you. What are the things that you're seeing out there that go, man, this, we've got to stop this before it goes too far? Well, you know, some of the things that the congressman's bill will, will fight against has been loyalty oaths in, in medical school. Professors who want to get promoted or want to get hired have to claim that they're for diversity issues. And uh, even though they, they believe that merit should be the deciding factor, whether an individual should get a job or not, they have to claim things. So now, now they're being compelled to speak in a certain way that's inhibiting free thought. And once you start down that path, then you end up with say the true sort of Soviet-style thinking here with uh, people being afraid to speak their mind. So this generally will cause a lowering of the, of the intellectual level of medical schools. And then what we've seen is that the, the empirical literature shows that minority students as a group are performing less well in their residencies. Oops. Sorry about that noise. Uh, performing less well in their residencies, and this has been shown in two very large studies. So, I think his uh, signal may have been disrupted. Readiness, readiness for practice. Okay. Uh, so um, you add that up, and and what we're seeing is in the literature, not not just my personal experience, but what in the medical literature shows is that these trainees that have gotten in based on DEI and affirmative action, really, before the Supreme Court decision, yes. as a group are performing less well. That's not so, to say there aren't some brilliant individuals sure. who are terrific, but, but as a group, there's a concern. And if you perform less well as a trainee, you're probably going to perform less well as a practicing physician. Does this mean that, uh, also, that better qualified candidates are not making it into medical school, medical school as a result, and thus the public is being deprived of, of future yeah. excellent health professionals? You're absolutely right. Uh, there are 22,000 medical students, 44,000 people apply to medical school. And we know that uh, candidates based on race and, and ethnicity are being moved ahead, pushed ahead, and others therefore aren't getting in because it's a zero-sum game. There are only so many spots and there are people that aren't, don't get a chance. And we've encountered in my organization, Do No Harm, which is you know a watchdog group, a medical watchdog group. We've had many parents and students write in and tell us you know they had ex extraordinary performance in college and couldn't get into medical school. You know, and, if 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 you're on. if you're a, a lefty, and obviously this is where it comes from that ideology. If you're a lefty who's thinking to yourself that doctors in America are only old white men or something, have have they been to a doctor's office lately? That uh, my view, <laughs> my my sense is like it's that's one of the most diverse fields I've ever encountered, just in terms of shallow skin based diversity. When I go see doctors and specialists, I see doctors of every gender and skin color uh, all the time. What what are they talking about? Yeah, well, that, that's that's the other point is that I, I've said many occasions there is no qualified minority individual, qualified minority individual who's attempted to go to medical school hasn't been given that opportunity. So the complaint about not sufficient numbers is really reflects the fact that there aren't sufficient numbers of qualified candidates out there. That's the problem. So the solution has been to change the qualifications rather than to seek better candidates or to improve their their previous education so they do qualify is it is it hyperbole to say that people will die as a result of all of this well it that is a obviously a strong statement and yes. you always hesitate to make too strong statements but you know that's certainly a concern i will say that for sure yeah you know and the reason one of the reasons i ask is uh it, it formed the centerpiece of a conversation between uh, Elon Musk and a former CNN host by the name yeah. of Don Lemon this week. They were talking about this yeah. very thing, and Elon was trying to impress upon Don Lemon that this is going to get people killed. And Don kept saying, well, this is hypothetical. It's not happening. He even claimed that evidence shows that uh, that if you have more minority doctors, in other words, if you lower the standards to allow minority doctors uh, into medical school and, and to come out as doctors, um, then that's better for the medical industry. Right. What, what do you make right. of that? Uh, you know, well, we've, we've addressed that. Two of my colleagues, Ian Kingsbury and Jay Green, did a very extensive evaluation of the medical literature on this question. And there is a, a quite a robust medical literature. And they did they found 
uh, five systematic reviews, which encompassed over 60 studies that were studied in, in various combinations in these reviews. And what they find, which we've published on our website, donoharmmedicine.org, is that there's absolutely no evidence. There's absolutely no evidence that having a black doctor improves the health care outcomes of black patients, none whatsoever. People cherry pick one study, but there are an equal number of studies that show, if anything, that the interactions can be worse between people of the same race. So the issue is to get the best doctor possible. And, you know, it's demeaning to black patients to think that they're interested in having a physician of their race as opposed to the best physician available. They want to get better. They want to get the best care. They're not foolish. And to to assume that they are and that they're so racialized that that's an important fact. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. I I know he's on a train, so that's one of the issues here. So, uh, Dr. Goldfarb, uh, it sounds like you may be reconnected with us. Uh, I just want to thank you so much for for spending some time with us today in advance and and doing the research on all this. It means so much. Well, Vince, you're terrific, and we really appreciate you very much. So thanks very much for having us. Thank thank you very much. He had a busy day today. He's on a train now. Thank you, Dr. Stanley Goldfarb. Uh, Yeah, uh, it it is amazing, isn't it? And, you know, you think about it, which I never do, honestly. Honestly, I never sit back and even contemplate it, really. But doctors are of every race. Every, I, I have various medical issues. I, my favorite doctor that I see, meaning my best doctor that I see, is a black guy. He's the, he's the best one I've got. I love that guy. He's, he's changed my life. He's done a lot of good things for me. And uh, I never once have paused and been like, you know, you need a white doctor. I, I'd have better outcomes if I had somebody who looked exactly like me. It's, this is so poisonous, this line of thinking. And shame on anyone who advances it. Dr. Goldfarb fighting against it. Uh, so, uh, so com- again, my thanks to uh, Congressman Murphy and Dr. Goldfarb today. I, th- that audio that I was referencing, here, here's uh, Elon Musk and Don Lemon. Once again, Don Lemon very patiently explaining to a slow, dim-witted Don Lemon. Elon Musk is explaining uh, how the medical industry works and how it's a bad thing to lower the standards for doctors. I believe that it, uh, if... If we if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor, you're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I I don't. Or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay, but the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, what is he talking about? The evidence in history shows the exact opposite. So the our previous experiences with lowering standards has been great for everyone? Is that what is he saying? What is he saying? It's incoherent. Oh, most doctors okay. most doctors now are white. And there are lots of mistakes in medicine. So I'm, I'm not even sure that's true, the claim he just made. Most doctors now are white. Certainly not true across the planet. You mean in the United States? Is that the claim? Is that even true anymore? I, don't, I have no idea. Again, not typically obsessing the a race of my doctor. There's, when I look up the reviews on the internet for the doctor, typically the, I'm av- not looking for, what race is this doctor? Most doctors now are white. And there are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that... What? My doctors are have bad medical care? I'm trying to understand your logic what? here when it comes to DEI because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. No, I, I said... So, if the standards, like, like let's say, uh, I think that particular thing was re- referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, <clears throat> a surgeon in training is asked to do a, a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay. I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. What? What a defense. Okay, let me just change the industry. If you have a guy who is doing a flight simulator, trying to practice to become a pilot, and every time he does the flight simulator, he crashes the plane, should that person become a pilot? (laughs) Well, that's just a hypothetical. You have no idea what kind of landing he's going to have until he actually becomes a pilot. So who are you to judge? I don't know. The flight simulator problem seems like an issue. I'll let you noodle on that for a bit, Don Lemon. It's... Well, let me take Mike and Bowie, line two. Mike, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Hello, Mike. Hey, hi, Vince. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, I just wanted to say that I've seen this argument brought up before in other venues, and this, I think what he was saying, and I've heard other people make this point, is they say 
that black patients do not get treated on the same level as white patients by white doctors. I think that what it was he was getting Don was Lemon he was trying to make. That's that's what Don Lemon was trying to say. That's yes, and I've I've seen that in other articles and stuff where they're saying you know that they don't get treated as well that they're basically being discriminated against. Yeah, you know, Don Lemon, what a what a turn that guy has taken. A decade ago, he was on television talking about how preposterous all of this racial obsession is. Uh, and now he's, you know, one of the leading figures in the racial obsession movement. Uh, so, you know, people change, not always for the better. Uh, and uh, this is, is based on nothing. This is, I can tell you right now, this is based on nothing. It's not based on any sort of meaningful evidence or anything. It's just him hip shooting and just advancing the lies that the left tells him. Well, everybody I know wants to go to the best doctor possible, and they usually look them up online to see if they are such. And I, you know, I, it's a ludicrous argument, but I think the man is just obviously chasing a paycheck. So yeah. he's going to say whatever the, you know, powers of be want him to say. I know. I know. It's, it's, it's sad is what it is. Uh, Mike, thank you uh, for that. Yeah, so Mike, Mike doing some translating of what Don Lemon was trying to say in his own incoherent way. Yeah, man, the left hates, hates merit-based hiring, actually working towards something, achieving it. They love racial prejudice, holding various minority groups to low standards, blocking other people from access to things on the basis of their race. It's kind of their whole deal. And it's totally destructive. Let's purge that. How about that? Hey, good afternoon to you. 535 here at News Talk 105.9 WMAL, where we're making sense of the news. You can join us, 888-630-9625, 888-630-WMAL. So much going on today, and a man's been waiting patiently on the phone. His name is Theodore. He's in Bethesda. He's on line four. Theodore, good afternoon. You are on the Vince Colonnese Show, and I love your name, so thanks for calling in. Oh, thank you, Vince. I appreciate it, and thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. I am beyond I am beyond upset at what they're doing to President Trump. I, I never in my wildest dreams thought that living in suburban Maryland would start to look like living in Pyongyang, Caracas, uh, Havana. This is insane what they're doing. Yes. Um, it, it's it's just so, so wrong. If they if Letitia James starts to seize President Trump's assets I think what you're going to see is a lot of us, including myself, going out and, you know, as we know, protesting patriotically and peacefully. Uh -huh. Wink, wink, if you know what I mean. Do you I, agree? I don't know what you mean by that. I, uh, Trump did say patriotically and peacefully he'd like people to make their voices heard. Um, well, yeah, yeah, of course. That, that's what I'm saying. But th there is a silver lining to all this. Yes. I was just on Craigslist, and Mar-a-Lago is listed for just fifty grand. <laughs> Do you think we could crowdsource some money and maybe go in together and buy Mar-a-Lago? Fifty grand? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to work. Fifty. If it was, if Mar-a-Lago was fifty grand, I would have brought oceanfront property a long time ago. Uh, I don't have access to the resources for a Mar-a-Lago, unfortunately, Theodore. Well, it's it's zoned as a social club, so there's only so much you can sell it for. But I think we'd be helping them out. I mean, I've got like 30K. If anyone out there is listening and they have an extra 20K and want to go in on it with me, yeah. just hit me up on True Social. I think you're like $500 billion, a million dollars short for the uh, the offer. But it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Theodore, thank you. I, yeah. think later to, I think later today. Yeah. I think later today. Uh-huh. I'm just waiting. I think Trump Tower is going to go on there as well on Craigslist. I'm sure. I'm sure it will. He's putting everything up. It's it's so great. Yeah. I, I, so you let, believe anything, won't you, Vince? So let me. Yeah, here it is. This is it. So just so people are aware, Theodore started the call expressing he's upset what's happening to Trump. The idea here is you're thrilled by what's happening to Trump, actually. No, I don't want to be living in Pyongyang. Don't you think suburban Maryland looks like Pyongyang? I think what's the happening in America right Israel. now does look like the kind of thing you would see in North Korea. Yes. Oh, you mean, right. But here, you know, when people commit crimes, lots of them, they tend to get in trouble. Really? Because, so because Montgomery County keeps releasing illegal immigrants who are molesting children, and that seems to be fine. 
It's awful. It's ridiculous. Yes. But at least Peter Navarro is going to jail, which is great. What is it? Why, why do you get a thrill out of this? Hold up. Why do you why do you get a thrill out of this? How long have you been an American citizen, Theodore? Uh, all 55 years of my 55 life. 55 years of your life. And now you're rooting on your political opponents going to jail? Why is that? I, I root for criminals to go to jail. And Be how come people like Bannon, Manafort, uh, uh, what's his name, Weisselberg or Weisselman, how is it that everyone around President Trump ends up in jail? But do you realize how, why that's happening? Do you have any? Did you pause at all to take an inventory of all of this, or is this just all yes, instinct I for I you? Thought I did. I did some in-depth analysis, and you know what it is? They all committed crime. No, no, you're 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 being you're you're a sheep. You're being misled, Theodore. And you have a chance to open up your eyes. I actually have faith that you can do it. But you are being misled by a political ideology that thinks that using the force of government in order to crush their political opponents is the only way they can win. It's disgraceful. They're trying to rob the voters of the ability to make these decisions. And you're, you're seeing it happen right before your very eyes, and you're rooting on the tyranny. You just brought up the idea that, oh, it's like Pyongyang and all that. That's the world you're creating right now. The idea, why would Trump, this case, the Letitia James case, the one I, was, I just took you on, the reason I took your call, the Letitia James case, they're trying to take out of him a half billion dollar pound of flesh in a case that has no victims. Does that make sense to you? Is that Does that sound like justice to you in America? Vince, if you didn't go along with this, I know you wouldn't have a job, but come on, at what point do you say I can't do Okay, this I can't, you're, this is ludicrous. I'm not gonna talk to you anymore, I'm sorry, goodbye. Because this is, I wanna engage him, I, w I wanted to draw him out just to engage him at all, to, to have some recognition of, of how preposterous it is that he's rooting this on. And I'll still hold out hope. As a Christian, I'll hold out hope that he's willing to open his eyes. But here he is rooting on this tyranny. It's disgraceful. And so let me, let me just give you an example of this. And, and uh, I was actually hoping to use that call as a predicate to play this audio, so I'm going to play it anyway. This is on CNN, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful. They, you know him from Shark Tank. Laying out, he said, you heard this this guy, who was the, what was the name of the caller just now? It doesn't matter. Theodore, whose name I like. That's right, I like Theodore. I like the name, but not the, not the caller so much. And, and you had Kevin O'Leary laying out that, you want to be Venezuela? You want to be Caracas? Well, guess what? We're headed there with this case where there are no victims. Take a listen. I don't think this case is about Trump anymore. I think this case is about New York. It's about the American brand. It's about what we promised the world in terms of fairness and justice and investing capital in a country that's built the largest economy on earth. Forfeiture, seizing of assets. Is that in our nomenclature in America? Is that what we tell people that want to bring their money here and protect property rights? Forget about Trump, nothing to do with Trump. You think this is good for business in New York? You think this is good for business in America? to take a law that we use to protect people against buying refrigerators at an overpriced value decades ago and apply it against an individual and then talk about seizing assets like he was in Venezuela hmm. or in Cuba. This is well, a very, very, very bad look for New York. And everybody around the world is watching this. This may be well, great for the attorney general, but this is I not good you. for America. But in terms of the valuation, can you be clear as to why? I mean, why would the properties not be sufficient collateral? What a great message to send out all around the world. Take a claim where there was no monies lost. Uh, for, uh, there, was no, there was no fraud here in the context of actually people losing money. Deutsche Bank, who made the loan, was made whole. And let's make a penalty of half a billion dollars against a, a, a crime, apparently, where no monies were lost. Great message for New York. Great message for America. Bring your capital because we'll protect your property. I think that was a statement that would be much better made sometime in Venezuela. I'm not kidding. That's a scary, scary message. And by the way, uh, there are uh, no again, such things as half a billion dollar bonds. The laws exist to protect the marketplace. There's a Washington Post reporter apparently screaming now. Are no half a billion dollar bonds. Never been done before. Never. This law has never been applied. Forget about Trump. Nothing to do with Trump. 
And, and he's, look, you can hear Kevin O'Leary's approaching this from a perspective of a businessman who is involved in throwing the kind of money around that we're talking about. And the difference throughout history, the distinction between countries that succeed and countries that don't is the level of corruption within them. There's a reason you can find cities on the Mexican border. There are cities, there are sister cities that exist right across the border from one another, American cities versus Mexican cities. And there's a dramatic difference in wealth, safety. There has been in the past. That's changing thanks to Biden. Wealth, safety, uh, the, the infrastructure, utilities. And why does the difference exist? It's corruption. On the Mexican side of the border, you're paying people off. You can't start a business unless you pay the bribes. It is a corrupt system. The criminal justice system bears down on you if you're on the wrong side of it. If you're paying off the right people, it, it helps you. It goes after your enemies. Here in the United States, that hasn't historically been the case. But the left is making it more so, more so with each passing day. And failed nations are defined by that kind of corruption. And we're watching it play out in front of us. And if you're Theodore and you're sitting here rooting on that corruption, you're either accepting money from it or you are buying like a sheep right now. And I'm hoping to wake you up. What is it? What is it? The uh, what did Mila say? It's like, I'm not here to, to, to lead sheep. I'm not here to lead sheep. I'm here to awaken lions is what he said. And that's what we should all be doing. Let's see. Marvin's in Chesapeake. Now, line four. Marvin, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Hey, Vince, good afternoon. I, I was just telling uh, your call screener that you know, it's so sickening to hear people who you uh, hear on the radio talk like sheep, just like you just said. You know, they seemingly are intelligent people. I mean, how what what does it take for them to understand this simple logic? The thing, there's too many outlets out there now that they, they give you information. You can't possibly be sitting there being dumbfounded, seeing what Latricia James has done uh, for, like, for the president, uh, openly saying that we're going to politically go and persecute this guy. Same thing they did in Russia. But yet and still, we have lost the edge of understanding what freedom is and what, what America represents. Yeah. It is unbelievably disheartening to hear these people talk like that. I'm 75 years old. You know, I went through segregation. I went through integration, uh, in, uh, the uh, segregation. There, you know, and, and, and there were people in my class that were just outstanding, intelligent people who learned. We didn't have an Internet. We, we, we learned from books. Yeah. And these people were not there. There were no victims out there. They went to work. And these people earned their way. These people end up being general officers, um, major, uh, uh, people who are all across the spectrum, uh, leaders all yeah. over the place. And nobody is crying about segregation, but I'm, I, I, we are crying about people who are not facing up to the facts and look, looking and seeing what is realistic and what's real and honest and, and stop being sheep. And what I call, get off, especially with blacks, get off the plantation, you know, get off the John Brown plantation and be a man. That's we live in I mean. a world with, with access to, to so much information. You, you, it's a shame if you don't actually look at it, if you don't actually dig in and figure out what the hell's going on. Unbelievable. Yeah, Marvin, thank you. I, I really appreciate the call, Marvin. Yep. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Sean, Columbia, now calling in line five. Sean, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Uh, hey, Vince. Man, that took a lot of patience on your part, man. I really uh, had a learning lesson. But that mental midget, as soon as you started bringing up facts, he had nothing but strict humor. This is the kind of guy that would take his daughter up to an abortion mill. He's a coward. And I appreciate the fact that you didn't give it back to him like I would have. Instead, you did the right thing. You said, I'm going to pray for you. And... Uh, that kind of example is going to rest with me today. I'm going to put Theodore up in my prayers because, my God, man, what is wrong with the world? Yeah, uh, my guess is he probably lied about his name. I, look, I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I think it's a great name. My, I have a nephew named Theodore. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt's great. That guy, not so much. Not so much. So I'm going to guess he's yeah. actually not a Theodore. Probably, probably lied about that too. Uh, thank, right. thank you, Sean. I appreciate yeah. the call. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kelly is calling in now from Spotsylvania, line four. Kelly, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Yeah, hey, thanks. Um, I, I've been listening to you for Oh, I'm sorry, Kelly, you're breaking up a little bit. Let's try one more time. One more time. Let's see. Kelly, you there? We're checking on her. It's not working. I'm sorry, Kelly. I, I appreciate the call. Let me uh, let me try Jennifer and Chantilly. Line three. Jennifer, you're on the Vince Colonation. Hello. Hey, Vince. This is Jennifer. Hi there. 
Hi. No, I was listening to Theodore, and, I mean, you've never had me so awake ever. I mean, what's happening with Trump is just ridiculous. And if someone can't see it and is that ignorant, to think that Peter Navarro, Navarro sorry, is a criminal for contempt of Congress, what about all the other people who are in contempt of Congress? Of I mean— Eric Holder, Lois Lerner, take your pick. Yeah, and then Fannie Willis. Come on. Someone's paying that lady off to do what she's doing. She's putting her whole reputation and career on the line to show her Fannie, put her Fannie out there, and sure. show what she's doing with her Fannie in public. Yeah. And I don't know who's behind it. Obama, Clinton, someone is behind it. Activists, deep down deep, they've organized so deep well, in the court, so deep in the justice system. And, and they've been brazen about it, Jennifer. I mean, in the case of, for instance, Letitia James, she ran on this. This was her. This was the, ca the the case that she made to the public when she was running for attorney general in New York. She said, "I'm going to take down Trump. My my job is to destroy him." She didn't illuminate what the crime was. She never laid that out. She just said, "I'm going to go after him." And so now she is. She's in, in a sense she's fulfilling a campaign promise. But that's what the Democrats in New York wanted, and that's what she's delivering to them. Uh, she, by the way has uh, routinely referred to Donald Trump as an illegitimate president, uh, meaning she is a an election truther. She, she doesn't think that the 2016 election was on the up and up, that it was stolen. That's her position. And she's she's just a, you know, she's a loyal servant of the left misusing the justice system in order to destroy political opponents that they hope the voters don't have a chance to actually pick from. Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking about Trump Towers. Seize Trump Towers. Everyone moves out. Burn the joint. Burn it down. There's no. What's the asset? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I don't think Trump's going to want to burn down Trump Tower. I think he's a little too proud of it to yeah. see that thing burn to the ground. Like, <laughs> give him a stack of smoke. I mean, it's just so ridiculous what they're getting away with. You know. Uh, yeah. And these people in our country who are so anti-American. That's what I don't get. You can go to any other country. Sure. Yeah. And they are so proud of their country. They want it to be like Haiti. They want to start a revolution. They want all the immigrants to come in. They want it to be a third world country, and then they're going to start taking over our houses. What are they going to do? I, I mean, how bad does it have to get? And then, you know, I was at the playground the other day. I met some, a family from Mongolia. Yes. She knows we're Christian because she knows where my kids go to school, okay? They, go to a, they don't go to public school. Well, she told me she was Christian, and she was, her and her husband were both Trump supporters. That's where I wanted to give her a hug. I, now, that's... You know, we had honest conversation about Christianity, abortion. This is the kind of person we need coming into our country, you know? Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, thank you. I, I appreciate it. You know, you're saying a lot of good things. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, too many, too many people. I do think there's a lot of people who are being misled. And unfortunately, that, brings, that makes us a failed country. And that's the last thing we need. We don't need to be that. Uh, and we're heading there. We're heading in the wrong direction. All right, line six is where we find Greg. He's an only. Greg, good afternoon. You're on the Vince Colony Show. Hey, Vince. Just, just quick, I know you don't have much time. Just want to thank you for the work you do. That, well, listening to Theodore, I'm like, there's so many useful idiots, idiots out there. It's so important that this next election is fair and free, because otherwise, we're, you know, we're doomed as a country. we got to have a free one this, this next next one. It's got to be legit in the whole bit. Yeah, I totally agree. Greg, thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't, that was a weird call. It was a weird call for a number of reasons. One is like, you know, I t took him seriously as I do. I've, I guess I have more faith in people than he does. He, you know, and uh, so we have him on. He, t he talks. He was on hold. I asked Corey. We just checked. He was on hold for about two hours. So here he is. I, I love one of the insults he directed at me was that the, this is the only job I could possibly have, which thank you, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Who cares? But then I'm saying, what are you doing with your life if you're on hold for two hours so you can do a prank call <laughs> on a conservative talk radio station? Whatever. You know, that's his that's his problem to sort out. Hey, I'm really grateful to you as always. And we've got a real treat coming up for you. The great one, Mark Levin, is ahead here on the legendary WMAL.